Hey guys, we are in Surrey, British Columbia. I'm hanging out with Sean and Alex. Sean, this is your shop. You've been carrying Velik now for about a year and it's really neat to see their lineup growing. You, you liking the bikes and stuff? Oh, I absolutely love it, yes. Very cool. I like it a lot too because the city in particular has this really cool integrated battery design with an optional upgrade. You can get an additional seven amps or 10.5 amps to like more than double the capacity and uh, Sean was nice enough to take one out of the bike. Look at this, this is what it looks like. And it's actually not too difficult to take it out. There's just a couple screws down here, kind of Phillips screws, actually three of them. And then it just, it slides right out. And this is a really lightweight battery. It's just like a couple pounds, two and a half, 1.8 pounds for this nice five volt charger. It's got an additional fuse and it's metal. So it's a little bit tougher and you can unplug the wall side. So it gets fairly compact. If you've got a backpack, they sell an optional suspension seat post, uh, 30.4 millimeters on that and an optional suspension fork because the stock fork is rigid aluminum alloy. These bikes are just like 42 pounds. We were focused on the medium size frame here, but they also have a large and then kind of a small and maybe extra small with this sort of I would call that a mid step and they have an even lower like full step through really cool setup. We're going to get out there and ride around, but I wanted to show you just before we got out there what these look like. And then even the steerer that is uncut like this. So shops like Sean's, this is Rocky cycle here. Mm -hmm. You, you guys get this in. And if a customer says, I really want that upright, relaxed body position, you can leave leave it a little bit longer, right? Is that you the can, idea? You can choose where you want to be. Okay, any other like quick shout outs for this bike or things that are unique for you as a, a shop owner? Uh, it, first of all, it doesn't really look like an e-bike. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it, if you're a shy electric bike rider, yeah. yes. <laughs> You can, you can uh, pretend that like uh, you're riding a regular bike and it's also really nice and light. That's, I light. love how light it is and like the weight distribution, it's all low, it's centered. Even the display panel, it's fairly minimalist. And so yeah. this might not generate as much like attention if you're parked outside and you know worried about people kind of tampering with your bike. It's pretty stealthy. Yes. Fantastic, there's even a password. We were looking at that in the setting. Yeah, so okay. we'll, get, we'll get to all that in just a minute, but this is a good way to start. Thanks you guys. Well, we found a beautiful spot in the countryside out here. And I'm gonna dig, do some test rides on this thing. But before we do that, I wanna go over some of the other specs. I mean, this thing is, is really awesome, 42.8 pounds for the medium sized frame. They say that the small is even closer to 40, which is what I consider to be a lightweight electric bike. The battery pack in there, even though it only gives you 252 watt hours of capacity, which is sort of half of what other bikes with like bolt-on batteries or big rear rack batteries do, that's still great if you're using pedal assist and you want something that's easier to lift, easier to hang off the back of your car. The downside of having a fully integrated battery like this is that you can't really take it off to charge it separately. You need to get this bike close to a charging port, which, you know, like a plug, plug on the wall and stuff, which isn't, it's not a big deal. Most people are storing an electric bike in like a utility closet or a garage and you've got room for, for that. And here's the, uh, with a charging port right there. So it's fairly accessible, but that does, it does just make it a little bit, a little bit different, right? Like that's an extra step that you're gonna have to take with a bike like this, always trade-offs. What's so unique about it is with a battery pack that's small and light and hidden like this, for people who want the extra range, you get that, that rack, that optional rack upgrade. I think that is so cool. So an additional seven amp hours or 10.5 amp hours for up to like 600 watt hours of capacity. You could go over hundred miles with this thing in the lower levels of assist. Now they also ship the bike with a throttle that you can take off if you want to. It's easy to unplug. So this could be a class one or a class two electric bike. I really like that. I like that more companies are giving you that option because some people with knee sensitivity or maybe just loading up their bike with groceries, kind of getting started with that throttle can be really nice. So I feel like they're giving you lots of just choice. The motor back here, fairly compact. I love that it's black, it's Velic branded, just like the disc brakes. They've done a lot of uh, it branding on this and it, just a little bit more of a premium feel. So this is 350 watt nominal up to 500 watt peak, 40 newton meters of torque. This is a planetary geared hub motor, free wheels very efficiently, quiet. Again, black spokes, black rims, plastic, black fenders. Could be a little bit more rattly than aluminum alloy or steel, but they aren't gonna rust, they're not gonna bend. And with these extra support struts right here, I actually think they've done a great job and they've got the rubber sort of mud flaps at the end, especially important up here. If, if you're pedaling and you're turning and you kick that, 
it's just going to bend. It's not going to crack. So I feel like this is really well set up. We are in British Columbia, Vancouver, right? Where it ha it's nice to have some extra, um, it's just kind of utilitarian features. Even this rack, this is a custom rack that they set up. It's got paneer hangers right here, a little bungee loop so you can put a strap over it, these different windows here. It's extra long as well, which to me is, is kind of neat. It's rated up to 45 um, pounds, 20 kilograms. And with a little bit thicker tubing like this, it's sturdy, but some of the like hanging paneers, some of them only fit with the, the smaller gauge tubing. So a bit of a trade-off here. I think this is gonna work with most accessories, but I did wanna point that out. And it doesn't have like threaded eyelets on the top, but it does have these extra kind of loops back here for some straps. And then there's, there's even these like knobs here. So if you have one of those, I mean, whether it's a bungee cord or sort of this pivoting piece, it, that keeps your bags, your panniers from sliding back and forth. And I'm trying to say the correct words. Um, Velik is based like over in Toronto or is, are you in Montreal? Montreal, yeah. Montreal Alex is over there. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. And we got some, some French support here. It yeah. sounds like where are your customers the majority? Are they in British Columbia or in I Montreal? would say a lot of them are in, uh, in Quebec. And French speaking. Yeah, definitely. So cool. <laughs> I, I have not been practicing my French enough, but uh, I really appreciate having you here as a backup. Thank you. And then jumping back into some of the other hardware choices. Um, you know, this is a pretty decent cassette that they've got here. It's eight speeds, it's 11 to 32 teeth. That's a pretty pretty widespread. It looks like it might be nickel coated, so it's less uh, inclined to be become rusty and, and squeaky and stuff. Same thing with the chain. This is the KMCZ chain. It's sort of rust resistant. No slap guard here on the right chain stay. I did ask Alex about that and he said, yeah, you know, we aren't including that. It's easy enough to take a piece of clear masking tape to put that on yourself if you want to. And there's there are no chips yet, but there is a little bit of just some water and dirt and stuff because as you ride and this can kind of see how it can bump into that. Not the end of the world, especially with a, an Acera derailleur. That's like three steps up in the Shimano group set. A little bit nicer, 42 tooth steel chain ring up front, pro wheel plastic chain protector, which is especially nice for me today because I have these light colored pants and so what as i'm pedaling i really don't want those to touch the chain this is just another little upgrade just like the fenders that make this bike more user friendly and clean in the rain um you know there there are other like full guides where you have another plate on the inside so the chain won't fall off that's something i consider but being plastic this is lighter just like the fenders and then not having that extra plate the little things kind of makes a difference over time coming back to weight and price and the price is pretty good on this before i get to that plastic pedals these are well go they get good surface area nice reflectors same thing you can see those on the wheels standard 170 millimeter long pro wheel forged alloy crank arms and this is square tapered bottom bracket you can see through there which is just kind of standard um, and then a six magnet sealed cadence sensor on the right side of the bike versus the left very well protected it's going to give you pretty good responsiveness and it's just not going to get bumped out of place as easily if you do end up lifting the bike up or going through some weeds or something like that i feel like it's very well protected so coming back to price for a bike that comes in four different frame styles and and sizes you know that's like extra small small medium large uh you know 2099 usd 2399 canadian the canadian price is really good and so i think some of the reason you know they're they're it's neat to see a company that's working with both countries, but I think most of their sales are happening in Canada. It was cool to go into Rocky Cycles here and see that they carry this thing and they've got the good customer support. Two year comprehensive warranty, three years on the frame. So great support. Velik's been around for a while. I've seen some of their, their other models and they do tend to be a little bit more value affordability, but there's some really nice upgrades here. One of which is these locking velo ergonomic grips. We've got an adjustable angle stem. This one's a little bit longer because this is a larger frame. We talked about that uncut steerer. So you can really raise this up and set it up just perfect for the type of riding or the geometry that you prefer that comfort orientation if you want to. But make sure over time as you're riding, especially if you go into the gravel, that could kind of loosen up over time and then the, the teeth and stuff can kind of get uh, stripped. So just make sure that's tight. Go back to your shop, you know, ch check on it, tighten it up. This is not a very very expensive part to replace over time if it does get worn out. Um, but I just want to call that out. Low rise handlebars, kind of nice. It's not just straight. They're coming back to you a little bit, giving you some more 
comfort. A lot of wires up here, and that's because these brake levers, three finger hydraulic brake levers, they have motor inhibitors as well as just the, the brake fru fluid line right here. So both of them. So that's great. It overrides pedal assist, which is important on a cadence sensor, especially with six sensors. Like that's pretty standard, but it's, it's not quite as responsive and dynamic as like the multi sensors and torque sensors. So for me, this is still a great setup, but it's nice that you can override that. Got a little bit of uh, cable wrapping and then some internal cable routing, which is nice. Not all the cables, but some of them. And then down here, you can see the, the two screws on this side that you would have to unscrew to get to that bottom bracket and remove the battery. The brakes for me are a really big deal. Uh, this is one of the areas where I'm glad they spent extra money because hydraulic means you're not going to have cable stretch over time as you're using the brakes. You're not going to get dirt and water and stuff inside the cable housing, which is going to make it more difficult to break. Hydraulic is just, it's really easy. And especially for the rear brake, which has to go longer. It's a longer brake line. So they've gone with hydraulic. Standard dual piston calipers, 180 millimeter rotor up front, which is excellent. 160 in the rear, which is kind of standard. They put the bigger rotor up front to help you stop as your weight shifts forwards. This gives you more surface area, better leverage when you're braking and better cooling. So great job on that. And then we've got a fairly comfortable Velo saddle up here. Nice kickstand, positioned pretty well out of the way. So you shouldn't get heel strikes. 40 millimeter spacing on this and it's adjustable length as well. So this is, this is perfect. Like great, great job on this. Quick disconnect for the motor cable back here. Like it's all set up pretty well. And then the tires, uh, these are Kenda Quest. They do have the K-Shield, which is like three millimeter puncture protection going on, 700 by 35C. Decidedly like city, um, a little bit more efficient. You'll notice the tread is not super like knobby. It's gonna be quiet. It's not gonna be as comfortable though. So for a road like this, it's fairly smooth. There are not a lot of cracks and you're just ambling along. This is, this is gonna be more efficient. And then the larger wheel diameter means that there is a little bit more air volume, even though the tires are narrower and it gives you a lower attack angle so that if you do hit like a bump, it smooths over it instead of ramming into it. So this is, this is classic city setup. I do like that they've gone with uh, slightly thicker 13 gauge spokes versus 14 gauge 36 holes. So that's that's more than like 32 or 28 um, Decent hubs and stuff just coming back to the the tires themselves So for me, it's really neat that they offer a suspension fork upgrade if you want that I haven't looked at it it's, It is gonna add some weight it adds some cost for sure for most people who just want to get around the city and have a lightweight bike this is a really special electric bike to me. I think it's very well done. It looks good, the sizes, all that stuff. Um, you know, it just makes me wanna hop on this thing and, and show you that the trigger shifters up here, one way on the high lever, and then up to three shifts on the low. Got the little window for the people who want that. A 330 millimeter length on that seat post. One thing that was kind of missing for me was bottle cages, um, like bosses, way, way to mount that. And they said, well, you know, the battery's in there and we didn't want people screwing into that accidentally. And then they could put them right here. And I still think they could, but they did make the point, you know, you lower the seat and it can run into those bosses if you have something mounted too. Some companies just do it anyway. Um, you always, you can go with like an aftermarket kind of like strap type of system. I think SKS has like the anywhere cage adapter. And you could also put like a frame bag right here with Velcro, kind of hang it. There are lots of options. And then with that rack, you could have a trunk bag with a bottle holster or those panniers. Just a lot, a lot to consider with this bike, lots of potential. And, and the high step does tend to be a more rigid, stiffer and easier to hang on certain styles of bike racks than the step through and the mid step. So for me, this medium size frame is perfect. This is what I would get for myself. I would just kind of step over like this. Try not to knock your shin into that rack. You could always take that off if you want to. You don't, but it does come with it, which is nice. You don't have to pay extra. So here is the display. Got this little orange button up top. Just hold that for a second. There we go. And you can see it flickering a little bit in the screen. And that's because these are LEDs. Like it doesn't look like that to me in real life, just on the camera because of the camera frames per second, the way it records. Starts out in zero. And if we press the trigger, nothing happens. It doesn't have uh, throttle at level zero. Um, down here we have an up arrow and a down arrow, but first we've got this M which cycles through kind of the modes or the menus. So zero, we have five levels of assist. We have current speed and kilometers per hour right now. Could switch it to miles per hour in the menu in a second. And then this is like trip distance. If we hit M, it cycles to trip time. And then average speed, max speed. 
and then back home. So those are kind of all the different menus. Then the, the up and down buttons here, if we go up, you can see the different chevrons all the way up to five. That's the highest level of assist. I was curious if it has walk mode. So I'm, I'm holding the down arrow and it doesn't, doesn't look like it. That's usually how that activates. I've done my best to get information on this display, including the settings, and we'll get to that in a second, but yeah, I'm, not, I'm not experiencing walk mode or the light. There we go, that's what I was looking for. So if I hold the up button for a second, we get lights and it actually dims the display, which is really cool. That's something I, I appreciate because at night, this could be a lot more distracting. Um, and for some people, it might feel a little small, like you're way up here, can you even read it? I, I don't know. I, it's it's a trade-off. It's nice that this isn't too obtrusive. It's not going to get banged up as easily or attract unwanted attention. There's no light on this bike right now, but that's another thing they sell. And it's got like a single square LED, and I think it's like 100 lumens or something, and it would mount up here, and it would wire in directly to the battery versus the rear light that it comes with. This is a blaze light, and it has two AAA batteries on it, and you have to remember to turn it on and off each time you ride, whereas the integrated light, much more convenient. You're not going to have to worry about turning it on and off, and also you might want to take that with you when you park so no one just you know, takes it off of your bike. Okay, so if we want to do the settings here, I'm going to turn the display off like that. Wait a second. Turn it back on, and then hold the M button. There we go. See, so you have to do it like within a few seconds of when you turn it on. Now there are all these options. So units, auto off, wheel size, speed. I was told that you really can't adjust the speed, which is understandable. They're trying to keep it under the 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometer per hour. Um, however, sometimes it's nice to lower the top speed and you can't do that either. So it's like, well, okay, you know, just use a lower level of assist. Password, so you can password protect this and protect it at the rack, which is nice, especially because the battery doesn't really come off the bike. So your bike is, People could tamper with this bike a little bit better. So having a password setting is uh, pretty sweet. And then, uh, okay, I don't wanna do that. Let's get out of here. And then I think it's time to take this thing for a ride. Okay, guys, just gonna stow that kickstand. I like that it doesn't come too close to that disc brake rotor. Again, 160 millimeter, less likely to get bent and kicked. Be careful with that front one. If you park in certain bike racks that kind of have the poles, you don't wanna bend that rotor. You're gonna get that like <laughs> sound as you're pedaling. I wanted to start off uh, maybe an assist level zero and just pedal this like a regular bike because I, I actually think it's going to be pretty You know comfortable There we go just Pulling out into the street Yeah pretty quiet It's feeling definitely Easier to pedal than some of the mountain bikes and just really heavy electric bikes that I've tried You know you're we're at like 42 and a half pounds or something. Most road bikes and stuff like this, they might be in the like high 20s or 30s. So there's still extra weight. You know, you think about that motor and the battery and the extra aluminum and wires, but it, it definitely feels more bike-like. And we do the no hands test. Feels pretty good. And now we could do any of the assist levels. You get full throttle power. You can just ease into that. It's a variable speed throttle feels really good. Yep, all the way up to almost 32. That's our top speed right there. There we go. 32 kilometers per hour. Very quiet motor. It's one of the things I noticed before. Got our trigger shifters and stuff over there. Feels like a regular bike in a lot of ways. Take up the assist. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of the quietest electric bikes with a planetary geared hub motor that I've tried in quite some time. I'm gonna turn it back around here. Go, and then, again, you don't have to push real hard, you just have to cycle the pedals to get that cadence sensor active. Definitely a delay, and that's the six, six magnets versus 12. They might have done that just to smooth it out a little bit. Considering that this isn't like the world's most powerful motor, I don't think it's a big deal. And you do have those overrides. So right now I'm pedaling, but nothing's happening because I got that the brake lever engaged, with the motor inhibitor. But yeah, there's a little bit of a delay when I start pedaling, it kicks on. And then when I stop pedaling, it shuts off. Okay guys, from here you can see that 42 tooth chain ring. You'll get to see my pants and my legs pedaling and really listen for the start and stop time 
on that uh, cadence sensor and the motor activating. Uh, there is a bit of a delay, six magnet cadence sensor, but again, you can override that with the, the brake levers, either one, which I think is great. And Shimano Acera, eight speed, 11 to 32 tooth cassette. I think that's, that's great for kind of a class one, class two, 32 kilometer per hour e-bike like this. It's a good setup, it's quiet. Normally I would, I would categorize a bike like this as commuter because it does have the rack, it's got the fenders, it even has a rear light, but it doesn't have the front light unless you pay a little bit extra. So I like that they've, they've given you these stepped options to try to keep that entry price point low because maybe not everyone needs a light, but I do care about safety. These tires don't have reflective sidewall stripes. You don't have the, the integrated lights, both on there. There's little room for improvement on things like that, but for a bike that's like, you know, 2,100 bucks US, 2400 bucks Canadian. That's that's pretty good. That's a pretty good price point for for what you're getting here. And I don't see a lot of bikes with like the narrower tires and the really you know it costs money to make a, a frame like this. And you can see the gusset here for strength, so you're not going to get as much frame flex on like the mid step or the low step bikes. I feel like they've done a good job. So here we go. I'm going to start out with pedal assist, and I'll use throttle in a minute as well. we go we reached our top speed it was quiet everything worked as expected now this time I'm gonna do the throttle from standstill not bad you know I weigh 135 pounds so I'm pretty lightweight uh, this bike's very efficient just the way it's built especially with the rigid fork lightweight and everything and the motor takes a second to get going and you would have more of a mechanical advantage if the wheel was smaller because it wouldn't have to push such a wide diameter so a, a relatively efficient motor with a bigger wheel you're not getting this like feeling it it's definitely a smoother that's part of what's going to give you great range and also just the, the quietness so hope that helps you to understand what's on offer here very quiet. I'm not hearing those fenders, not hearing that kickstand bounce around a whole lot. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, Alex has volunteered to pop on that helmet and do a third person perspective. I just want to see what this looks like with you on it. Good. You got it. If I put a jacket on. <laughs> yeah, you know, I only need you to ride in a quick oh, circle. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Perfect. It is a little bit chilly out here. Sound good. Looking good. There you go. Just <laughs> he's. You're way too far, buddy. Circle back. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Stealthy, stealthy. I love it. Yeah, it see it just looks like a regular bike. I like that. Um, Belk has done a good job. I mean, the first time I saw him, it was just like, okay, you know, it's another brand and they have some interesting choices. But I, I think a lot of what you guys have done on this bike is is spectacular. And I, I like that, for example, the charging port is up high. So you don't have to bend way down and it's not going to get caught with the crank arms and stuff. And just the upgraded grips and everything like that. I I feel like this is pretty sweet. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, Alex. I appreciate it. Thank you. You guys back at the website, I have a whole category for lightweight electric bikes and there's a, a tool where you can compare the specs and I've just gone into super detail like I always do. So you can you get a feel for this bike since you're not here with us. I hope you have fun out there on the trails. Ride safe, love ya. We'll see you next time.